Welcome to this Week in Review briefing. Recently, I did a commentary on 20 reasons why people need to say no, four more years no. And you know, when you read it, you get discouraged. And then you look around, not just in the culture today, but at the church and some of the happenings recently. Things with Mike Bickle in the House of Prayer and T.D. Jakes. And then you see things with Mark Driscoll. And I mean, I could go on and on, but we need hope. And I tell you, you stay with me today because God wants to give you inspiration, encouragement, and hope from the Word of God and from what I share. In our church service today, our pastor, he said, I I need to share some hard things at the beginning. And he began to just basically say with a heavy heart, what's going on in Christendom? You know, recently the leaders at the IHOP Kansas City said they're shutting down the house of prayer there and what's been going on there. You say, I know, it's been so difficult. I can't believe this is happening. And then recently with T.D. Jakes and the stuff that's going on with his family, you see the divorce and then you say Diddy and the lawsuit and then the comments by T.D. Jakes. And here's a church. I've been there. I've been there right outside and see it. It holds about 8,200 people and it's in declension and we see it diminishing and you say, how could this be happening right now? And then there's other things going on. You know, Mark Driscoll, he was part of a men's conference. And all of a sudden they stop things because they have like, what was it, like a drag show at the beginning. He makes comments and you say, all this crazy stuff is going on. And then I got my copy of The Stand from the American Family Association. And what does it say on the cover? The cover story says here, our exhausted pulpits talking about how leaders today are losing hope and getting discouraged. Well, what does the Bible teach about hope? This is so central to our Christian life. So stay with me in this because this is very important. Do you know that it tells us in Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, it says, now may the God of hope, that's the God we serve, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. And it says in the power of the Spirit, so that you might abound in hope. God wants you to have hope. And hope is not wishy-washy faith. Sometimes people say that, oh, you got to be in faith and don't, you know, don't be looking at hope. But the Bible says in Hebrews, it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. So hope is a foundation to then us believing. And you know, if a person doesn't hold on to those those two ropes of hope and faith, well, then they're adrift. No hope? Well, you, you have nothing to go and, and lead you with your sails, so to speak. And then if there's no faith, you have no anchor. And so what are we supposed to do today? Well, IHOP, House of Prayer, shutting down. And I mean, it's been a shock. And then we see T.D. Jakes, what I mentioned. And we say, how could this giant potter's house, what's developing there? And then this drag show and Mark Driscoll making comments and then they stop it. And he's starting a church out there in, you know, in Arizona and the uh, billboards talking about heat up your sex life. And people are saying, this kind of crazy stuff is going on. What are we supposed to do? Well, I want to give you hope. And I want to tell you this. A leader shared this with me recently, that he was in a place where he was really diminished and really discouraged and lacking hope. It was something of a personal crisis. And he said, a man of God, Greg Laurie, you know from the Jesus Revolution, a man of God out west. I love that man. He shared with him and he said this. Hey, he got the leader's attention so he wouldn't sink deeper. And he said this to him. Don't doubt in the dark what God showed you in the light. Did you catch that? Don't doubt, don't doubt in the dark what God showed you in the light. In other words, it's in the midst of darkness and discouragement that we need to be anchored in God's word and we need to stand strong. Now, you're going through some things and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some encouraging testimonies, but you know the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. They will run and not be weary and walk and not faint. In other words, those that hope in the Lord, those that the Hebrew there is intertwine themselves in the Lord, they gain three things when we focus in on the Lord there. They shall run and not be weary. In other words, we get what? New uh, endurance to, to keep going. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They get a a supernatural strength from God. And then also, they mount up with wings. And that's like a new perspective. And in difficult times, that's exactly what we need. 
But you know, Charles Spurgeon, a man of God who many look to as a prince of preachers, you know, he, there's a book, Spurgeon Gold, and you can get a classic quotes from him. But you know, Charles Spurgeon said this to all of us, and he says it through the, you know, through the portals of history, and he said, don't look to hope. He said, look to the Lord Jesus, who is the anchor of your hope. So we have to stay close with the Lord, with His Word. And in these times, we've got to just brush off doubt, fear, unbelief. Satan is the father of lies. And he'll do all that we can, he can, to try and bring us down. That's his weapon. So I want to give you some encouragement today as we look to the Lord. You know, we have some friends recently, and they got a diagnosis very serious in terms of a cancer diagnosis. Now imagine if that came to you. But guess what? We prayed, we agreed together, and then they went in for some surgery, and guess what? The doctor said, whoa! He said, there is no cancer here. He removed something, but he, he was celebrating a miracle. Now you say, I, I want to believe for that because I have some physical needs in my own life. Well, I want to give you hope. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. we got to start there with our hope and then anchor in the Word of God. How about this one? Uh, I know of a situation where a leader... He was struggling because what? He said one of his family members, one of his children. Uh, you know, it was like a, a, a prodigal. What am I supposed to do? But as we prayed together and others joined together, and I want you to know it was so encouraging. Recently, somebody approached this, uh, as, as, uh, this child uh, of this pastor and talked to him. And it was like a moment, eureka, whammo, and he turned. He was really born afresh in the Lord. And then within a matter of weeks, it was amazing, he was out there witnessing, going out in the mall. He was helping out in leading on the worship team. It was like a whole new day for him. God can do that. I heard recently of a guy that was an atheist, and the word came, I'm waiting to get all the details on this, born again, and it's a whole new day for him. So what about this? You say, but Larry, I don't have hope on my job. I get discouraged on the job. Well, the Bible tells us, whatever the task, you do it heartily as serving the Lord and not man. And so there's times, no matter what we're doing on the job, we make adjustments, we may have to talk with leaders, but then we have to adjust our attitude and make sure we're serving as under the Lord. I know this waitress, and she shared this. Imagine, this is a true story. In a diner, she said that this curmudgeon, old man, would come in, and he was always complaining, grumpy. The, the coffee's cold. The toast doesn't have butter. What, you're too slow in that. And she said, as a Christian, I just went in the back, and she said, I determined, I am going to love this man. I am going to overcome the evil with good. Well, do you know what? She did for a number of years, and then one day an attorney came into that diner. He asked if he could talk with this waitress. Pulled her aside. He gave her an envelope and he said, do you remember Mr. So-and-so, the grumpy man? Yeah, she said, where's he been? Well, the attorney said he passed away and he put you in his will and he wanted me to give you this. Well, he gave the envelope and you know what? It was a check for $50,000 and the attorney said, you know why he gave this to you? Because he told me to tell you, he said, I knew that I was grumpy and unkind to you, but you were always so loving and kind to me and I just wanted to say thank you. See, you never know. So we stay strong. There's a waitress here in our area at the Waffle House. I asked her once about her biggest tip. She said that a certain country singer came in and guess what? Gave a, a, afterwards said, hey, thanks, have a good new year, and gave $2,000. Now, I love these stories because they give us hope. But we first and foremost need to look to the Lord. So right now, you're saying, Larry, when I see all this stuff going on, well, I'll tell you this. When leaders are involved, that's where prayer comes in. We're called to pray for our leaders. Leaders. And then we need to look to ourselves. You know, are there any things in our own life? Are we engaging in situations where we're giving play to the devil? Don't believe this lie that I can't get out of the sin or whatever it is. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible says no temptation overtakes you that's not common to man. God is faithful. He'll not let you be tempted beyond your strength. But with the temptation will give what? The way of escape. But we've got to cooperate. And if it's in the sexual realm, I've told young people for years, you've got about two, three seconds when you get in that, and you get, you're in your bed in the morning, get out of that bed and get out. Don't be monkeying around entertaining crazy thoughts. So God wants you to have hope. He wants you to be in his word. Repent and change. If there's any areas where, where you're giving play and, and, you know, opportunity to the devil. The Bible says give no opportunity to the devil. Our pastor asked us today, he said, now look, I'm asking if we as a church can set aside three days, and we're going to do it. 
for prayer and fasting. And it's along these lines that we really stand against the wiles of the devil, draw upon the power and the supernatural grace of God, and that we stand strong. No matter what the enemy tries to do to us as a church, we're going to stand strong to the glory of God. So I want you to have hope today. I want you to stand strong. You know, I give out uh, my personal testimony track. I, many of you know that. But I also have a calling card. I gave it to a Hispanic fellow at a ball game this weekend. And this is my card, and it has my email and I'll say, hey, here's my card. But you know on the back what it says? It says that my mantra is hope. H-O-P-E. Helping other people every day. And I hope that through my time and conversation, I was able to inspire and give some hope. And I say, go to my website. It's on here. And I say, basically, it's right there for you. All kinds of free resources that will give you hope. In my study, I have something, a man of God uh, that uh, I know dearly. He knows Pete Rose, the all-time hit leader. And Pete Rose goes to Vegas, I guess it is, and he signs autographs. But you know what? Pete is not going to be in the Hall of Fame, but he, he's holding out hope that maybe, even though there was supposedly, allegedly, some gambling, that things can change. Well, you know what? He autographed a ball for me, and I'm there. You know what Pete Rose wrote here? It says right on here. He said here, he says, Larry, pray for me, Pete Rose. We turn to the Lord, and we will have hope. There's a movie out right now, and I close with this. It's called, you know, One Life. Sir Anthony Hopkins, he's in his mid-80s. But do you know that a number of years ago, he was an alcoholic? He couldn't break free from the addiction. But he went to a meeting, and a woman, God bless this, I believe, Christian woman, she said, you need to come to the place where you admit you can't do it yourself. Cry out to God in desperation, and he can set you free. So that's exactly what Sir Anthony Hopkins did. And do you know now, for over two dec decades, he has been free from the bondage of alcohol. God has hope for you today. He's the God of all hope. Turn to him. Clean house, whatever needs to be done. Stay accountable with others. Stay in the word of God. Draw close to the Lord every day. Remember, those who hope in the Lord, they will renew and exchange their strength. Mount up with wings like an eagle. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. We need hope, and God will give it to us, no matter what's going on in the church or in the culture today. Receive it from God. Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.